New How to Be Hill TV, Stacy Hampton, Positioning for the Blind Man. Good morning, good people. How y'all doing out there? And you know this video is edited and arranged by How to Be Hill TV. Hold on, I preach. Let's go. It's healing time. Harm is done to the saints in Jerusalem. Okay, I'm gonna make an excuse that I may not get on
Hear me. He thought his eyes were open. Yeah. Come on. In actuality, his eyes was closed. Because right. right. when you don't know who Jesus is, and when you don't know who the living God is, guess what? Your eyes are closed. The Bible, uh, Jesus says that he came to make those whose eyes are open closed. And those whose eyes are closed open. Okay? So, Saul was one of those ones, he needed to close his eyes to be able to see Jesus. Shine mm -hmm. the light down on him. He fell off his horse. Okay, what was going on? Okay? I, I don't know. I fell off his horse. I can't see. Mm -hmm. Two seconds. I, just, I know I just saw this road that I was going on. Mm -hmm. In two seconds, I'm on the ground and I can't see. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. Now, on, on top of that, these people that you done brought with you, they looking at you crazy, and why is this man talking out the sky? And okay, we don't we don't know what's going on. Okay, so Saul had to be brought down a level. Sometimes the guy has to close his eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, he closes his eyes. Yeah. He had to get the men that were with him to take him back into the city. Cool. Jesus asked him, "Why are you persecuting me?" He talking to Jesus. He said, they're going to take you back into the city. You know, he was blind for three days. Blind for three days. Okay? Does it sound familiar to y'all? Does it sound like the resurrection to you? Mm -hmm. Sound familiar. Three days he was blind. I can only imagine what he was thinking or what, or what conversations he had with God at the time. Yeah. The only thing he couldn't see, the only thing he could do is speak to God and hear what God had to say yeah. to him at the time. That's right. Okay? So, three days, no, no way to see. Talking to God, praying to God. Um, to God. Not eating. What does that sound like to y'all? To me, that sounds like prayer and fasting. Yeah, come on. Right. Prayer and fasting. He didn't eat for three days. He did eat only, spoke with God, and that was it. Made to be set off separate from everybody else. Sometimes you gotta set yourself off separate to fix things with God. You have sometimes it's it's meant to be isolated. That's right. So you can hear God and understand who God is. Speak. Because when you have everybody else around you in your ear talking, telling you, oh girl, you should do this. Oh, this happened, and oh, girl, what you think about this? No, it's time for you to listen to God. Amen. And that's why He sent the divine format to close your eyes. Okay, y'all get that? Okay. So finally, apparently, Saul of Tarsus heard Jesus. Why do I know? Because when you're praying and fasting and, all, and you're isolated and you're, you're hearing from God, God sees that. Jesus sees that. And then it's time, it's, then it's time for him to go in and fix the children messed up. So, the other part of the story is there is a servant, a disciple, his name is Ananias. Ananias was a disciple. To me, if you gotta be a disciple, if you're a disciple, that means Jesus has trusted you with his word. Jesus has trusted you to tell people about who he is already. So that that that's that tells me Ananias was prepared. He was he was being prepared for War or being prepared to tell God's people about who Jesus is. So Jesus goes to Ananias and tells Ananias, "Okay, you're prepared. You've been reading your word. You've been talking to me. I know you. I know you. So there's a, there's a power over you that." Might not have been over somebody else. I'm sure he could have picked anybody because, but there's a reason why sometimes God picks you. Yeah. Okay, That's right. you understand that? So he was prepared. Okay. So Ananias is obedient. Okay. One reason. Oh, let me roll this back. First of all, Ananias did not want to go because of who he already knew Saul was. Okay. Saul was chosen. In your call. You are chosen. Saul was chosen to do the work. Ain't it 
funny how the ones that are chosen, those are always the ones that's first bad. Mm-hmm. That's 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 that. Those are the ones that always make the most havoc. Mm-hmm. Anyways, he already knew who Saul was. He didn't want to go anywhere near this man. He said, "Jesus, if I walk up on this man, he's gonna slice my throat." Mm-hmm. Because that's what he's been doing to people that know Jesus. God told him to go anyway. Okay, he was he was obedient and went on. He got there, placed his hands on Paul. I mean, on Saul. I'm sorry. Who came? Who came? Paul oh, later. Hold oh, on. So sorry. <laughs> and his eyes were open. So, moral of the story is: This is what God told me to tell Christ Temple last week. We come to church. We sit here. We listen to Bracey. We listen to Papa Lot. And the question is are you as prepared as Ananias was? Come on. Come on, Come on Stacey. Got him? That's good. Are you prepared? Are you reading your word? Mm-hmm. Are you praying? Uh-huh. Come on. Are you fasting? Yes. What power do you have that you can, like what Grace was saying earlier, cast out demons and devils? Can you? If somebody gave you right now gave you gave you the task of placing your hands on somebody that needs to be healed, Come on. will they be healed? Because church is not it's, it's church is just not for us to sit and listen to. Uh, the praise and worship team and listen to the choir and, 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 you know, have all these extra bake sales and things like that. Okay. We're supposed to be being equipped. Guess what? Because everybody in this room is meant to be a disciple for Christ. Can we understand? Come on. Everybody in this room, that is what we're called to do. It's not, it's not about all our extra gifts and talents and what we do for a living and our, and our, our uh, whatever field we're in. It's not about that. At the end of the day, is it do you serve the living God and are you willing to get the next blind man to Christ? Come on, Stacey. Y'all understand? That's what we're here for. It's, it's, it, we're in our last days. It's time out for coming to church and just sitting on the pew and sitting on the sidelines and doing nothing. No, it's time to get out there. Because guess what? We have a dying world right now. Amen. We have a dying world. Hold on. It should be okay, the things that I see on, on Facebook. It's, o- it's okay for adultery and fornication. It's okay for going out and doing whatever you want to do and, 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 and handing, handing that to God. That's trash. You can't bring the living God trash. That's not holiness. Period. Holiness is still right. <laughs> Run that back. Holiness is still right. Holiness is still right. Holiness is still right. Yeah. I'm saying this because the church has a responsibility. Yes. We expect the world to be that way. Right? We expect the world to be that way. But it's our job to plant the seeds so that hopefully somebody will not be that way. It's, it's time for us to help open the eyes of the blind. That's right. Hold on. The blind man is that, that man is that's smoking crack. The blind man is that man that's drinking all the time. The blind man is that woman that's cheating on her husband. Those are all the blind men. But we have, but in order for people to change, we as a church have to be prepared. The reason, the whole, let me tell you, the whole reason why the disciples had to be trained when Jesus was here, because Jesus knew he was leaving. Let me, let me tell you just another short story. There's another blind man in the Bible. His name is Bartimaeus. Jesus was able to open his eyes himself. Why? Because he was here. He was here on earth with us. He was in light, walking around on earth with us. Most of all of the miracles and, uh, you know, open blind eyes, healing people, Jesus performed that stuff without the, the disciples. 
without his help. They, their help at all. He didn't need their help. That's right. He prayed and he fasted himself like he was supposed to. And that's why those things were able to happen. He had power to do those things. Come on, man. So now Jesus is in heaven. He's not here. So why did he why did he call for disciples? Because he needs us to be vessels of power to be able to do those things. Yeah. And the reason why those things are not happening is because people in our churches, the people that we're supposed to be making disciples, they're not preparing themselves. Not just trying to get on somebody's throat or somebody's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not on somebody's dog. Come on, talk that to them. Come on. But it's time out for that, guys. It's time out for that. It's, it's time out for 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 it, it, it to be hard for you to praise and worship God alone. Let me tell you, that's a daily that is a daily lifestyle. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. So if you not if you are not on a daily basis, if if the only if the only time that you hear God or you hear a word from God is when you come in here on a Sunday morning, okay, you need to get yourself in line. Yeah. You need to get yourself in line because this is a daily Amen. lifestyle. Amen. And it's getting harder and harder out there to live in our world the way it is. It breaks my heart some of the, some of the things that I see. But it's up to us as a church and other churches. It's really sad how, how it, it's, it's, it's like it's like clockwork, like like it's just normal just to come to church and that's not I'm not doing anything else. I'm just I'm just gonna waste God's time and I'm not going to figure out what my purpose is and I'm just gonna sit on the sidelines. I charge everybody in this room today to think long and hard about your life and what God has purposed in you to do. I don't care if you two years from two years old to hundred years old, you got a purpose this year. That's right. Amen. And until the day you die, you should you should be fulfilling that purpose. Yeah. Awesome. So that's a secret for y'all. The reason why the reason why I wanted to preach this and I wanted to say this is because God has sent, I would say, two to three divine appointments to me in the past few years. God told me over and over, say, see, these are the things that I want you to do, and these are the things I want you to carry out. Because if you don't, then somebody's eyes is going to remain blind, and then they won't figure out what their purpose is. Ooh. I don't want to be that person. Right. Hold on. So I said, God, if, if, if I was a runner, because that's basically what I've done, I have ran, and I have ran, and I have not wanted to speak in front of people like I was supposed to. I finally said, especially when different people kept coming to me saying that to me, I said, okay, it's time for me to stop. The last, the last preacher, I went to a church, and I had been to his church before, and he prophesied over me. He said, the Lord has said, you are not going to go one more year without serving the race you're supposed to. <laughs> not, not another year is going to go by. And when he said that to me, I had such, I, it, it did something to my heart so bad. I said, you know what? No more. I surrender. I surrender. I'm done. So if you have a lot of other things going on, we all have families. We all have friends. We all have work. Put God first. Yeah. Amen. 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 Put God first, please. Because in the long run, it's going to be better for you. That's right. It's going to be better for your family. Because you surrender. And not only that, our world needs it. The nations are dying. Spiritually and literally. There are wars and rumors of wars. There's all these hurricanes. I'm not like like the weather is just horrible. That's not that's not by chance. That's done on purpose. That's right. That that is a purpose for those things. Revelations, it tells you. These are how our last days are going to be. So, my question is, how are you going to spend your last days? Before Jesus comes, before the rapture comes, how are you going to spend your time? 
You gonna spend your time worrying about, oh, I got to pay this mortgage. Oh, I got this car, no job. <laughs> oh, I got to pay for my kids. I got to go to some college. That's all fine and good. You can take care of that stuff after you help over some of these blind eyes. That's right. Understand? Yeah. At this time, anybody on the side of my course, if you have not received Jesus as your Savior, Jesus as your protector, Jesus as your healer, Jesus as your friend, come down at this time. Or if there's anybody in this room that needs to be prayed for. Nobody? Okay. Everyone? Oh. Praise God. Thank you so much for listening. Now I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Then we're going to say our affirming declaration. And after that, I will have some closing words and I will bless you with the benediction. If this life ended right now, do you know where you would spend eternity? No matter what you may have been taught before, heaven and hell are our only options. Whoever we make our Lord, meaning our master or our ruler, the person we obey here on earth, after this life, that is who we will go live with. So if we make Jesus Christ our Lord, then after this life, we go to live with Jesus in heaven. If a person makes Satan their Lord, then after this life, they go to live with Satan in hell. And for the people who have heard about the glorious good news of how Jesus can improve their life here on earth and how believing in him gives them entrance to heaven, but say that neither Satan nor Jesus is their Lord or that they are their own Lord, that means by default they have made Satan their Lord. While I concentrate on the goodness of God where prosperity, perpetual healing, protection, and peace of mind are concerned, I must let you know that hell is real and I don't want anyone I know to go there. A simple Google or YouTube search on near-death experiences where people died and went to either heaven or hell and a doctor or medical professional brought their body back to life yields thousands of results. Unfortunately, Satan is the lowercase g god of this world, and he daily causes atrocities, killings, and diseases to kill people who have heard about Jesus, but have not made Jesus the Lord of their life. Satan also attacks people who have been saved, usually through accidents or sickness or disease to cause them to die as quickly as they can so that they don't have the ability to lead other people to Jesus Christ. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Will you pray this prayer and repeat after me and secure your eternal life so that you will spend your forever in heaven? Before we pray, I want to read this scripture to you. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 through 10 in the New American Standard Bible, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Now, Repeat these words out loud, believing, meaning being convinced and fully persuaded of them in your heart, and you will go to heaven when this life is over, and in this life you will be eligible for God's promises of prosperity, healing, protection, and peace of mind. As you continue to read the promises of God in your Bible, your life will get better and better. Now, whether you are asking Jesus in your life for the first time or rededicating your life, or even if you are in good standing, reaffirm your commitment to Christ and say these words with belief. Father God, 
I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I repent from my sins and wrongdoing. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross as a sacrifice for my sins. And because of the blood he shed, my sins are forgiven. Father God, I believe you raised Jesus from the dead. I believe in him. I confess Jesus is the Lord of my life. I dedicate my life to him. Jesus, come into my heart. I call on the name of the Lord and I receive salvation. I am a new person. I am now saved from hell. I am now God's child. I am going to heaven when this life is over. I know God will help me make this life better for myself and others. Jesus Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. I am redeemed from poverty. I am redeemed from sickness. Father God, by accepting Jesus, I know I am sealed by the Holy Spirit. I now ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus name. Amen. Glory be to God. I am so happy for you. That is the most important decision. The most important thing you can ever do. You are now saved. Who I'm happy for you. Now, there are some next steps you can take to help you in your walk with Christ, your walk with God as you grow and get stronger and stronger. The first step is pray as often as you can. At least when you wake up, eat food and before going to sleep. You want to pray to God the Father using scripture that addresses your situation and end the prayer in Jesus name. So we have been given the name of Jesus. And when we pray, we sign that name like we're signing a contract or a piece of paper or a document with the name of Jesus. Then as you go throughout your day, listen for the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do. Now it's going to be an inner voice, not necessarily an outer voice, but an inner voice inside your spirit. Now Satan can speak to you too. So you will know that it's God because when God speaks to you, it'll bring peace. It'll bring clarity and it will be in accordance to his word. That's why Number two is so important, but let me give you an example of a basic prayer uh, when you're praying over your food, for instance. Father God, thank you so much for providing this food. I thank you that I have the money to buy the food. Thank you that someone was able to get the food to me. I pray that um, this food bless me and that there will be nothing negative in the food that might harm me. I thank you according to 1 Peter 2.24 that by the stripes on Jesus' back that I am healed. In Jesus' name, amen. That's just a quick example of a prayer using the formula that I gave you above. Now, number two, read the Bible daily. The more you read the Bible, the better life will get. Set aside time to read God's word. Read the glorious good things about what Jesus has already done for us. Set aside at least 15 to 30 minutes a day, at least. If you can only start with five minutes, start with five. But as you continue to read the Bible, you will become addicted to it. People become addicted to so many horrible things. This is a wonderful opportunity to be addicted to something that is good and that will positively change our life. It's actually possible to get to two hours of Bible reading daily by getting up 15 minutes early, reading 15 minutes on your first break at work, 
reading 30 minutes during your lunch, reading 15 minutes at your second break, and instead of watching TV or a movie, reading 45 minutes before bed. Number three, be baptized by complete body submersion in water. Now, there are many types of prayers. Some of them are the prayer of faith, the prayer of salvation that we just prayed. There's a prayer of petition and intercessory prayer. The Bible talks about two different types of baptism or styles of baptism. One is being baptized in Jesus' name. The other is being baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, people have different opinions on which way to be baptized. I say there's no need to argue. Be baptized both ways. Have someone baptize you in the name of Jesus, dunk you under the water, submerging you under the water all the way and bring you back up and baptize you again in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, if you can't find a church to baptize you, you can baptize yourself. I've been baptized in church and I've been baptized on my own. You can baptize yourself in a pool, and most pools have the cleaning chemicals in them to make sure that there's no biological disease or bacteria that harms you. Now, if you baptize yourself in the river or a lake or an ocean, make sure you close your nose because you don't want any bacteria to go up your nose. Water baptism is a beautiful thing. Even now, when I think about it, I cry sometimes. It symbolizes how we were buried with Christ and how we were raised together with him. Just as the water washes the dirt from our body, it illustrates how Jesus' blood washes our sins away. Number four, continue to see God the Father to be filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. Jesus teaches us to be born of the water and to be born of the Spirit. You want to continue to seek God the Father by asking Him to receive the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. Then continue to thank Him in advance until you are filled. Everyone who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Being filled is a subsequent experience that can happen immediately or later. Continue to sing praise and worship songs to God, even in your own apartment or home. As the anointing gets stronger and stronger, God the Holy Spirit will give you words to say, which you do not know. Say them, and joy and strength will spring up in your heart. There's many scriptures about the benefits of yielding to the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift that God gives to all who ask. Number five, join a Bible believing church. Join a church that believes that the gifts of the spirit are in operation today. A church that teaches faith in God's word and believes Jesus still heals today without reservation, excuse or doubt. The Bible teaches us not to forsake gathering together with other believers. So get into a good Bible believing church that teaches you the scriptures that is motivating and that helps you move forward in your Christian walk with God. Number six, volunteer and join a ministry at your church. Volunteering is so good for you. It has been my experience that it helps increase our mental health as well as helps provide us financial benefits. Now, if you talk to other people who volunteer, many will tell you that they are happier, more energetic. They feel that they are bettering the world and somehow more material possessions come into them or the material possessions they have last longer. When you volunteer to help the homeless, the widow, the orphan, the imprisoned, it puts things in perspective and causes you to be more grateful and thankful for all God has done for you. While at the same time, God is able to use you to make things better for others. Number seven, tell your friends and family about the goodness of Jesus Christ and what he has done for you. Learn how to lead other people to Christ, how to properly convince and influence people to make this most important decision 
to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior by verbally declaring that Jesus is their Lord and by believing in their heart that God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, we're definitely here to help you. If you have any questions, if you need any assistance, you can contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at How to Be Healed TV. That's H O W T O B E H E A L E D T V. And our email address is How to Be Healed TV at gmail.com. Now, when it comes to healing, we must be convinced and fully persuaded that we have access to all God's healing power at any time, whenever we decide to take it. Just like children don't ask their parents if they can have food out of the refrigerator or out of the pantry. They just take it because the parent has already provided it for them. We must come to God like little children being convinced and fully persuaded that we are God's child and we don't have to ask for our healing. We just go into the Bible and take it by continually thanking God, the father for our healing, regardless of what the facts and symptoms say. So every time a symptom attacks, such as a hiccup, a burp, a cough, a sneeze, or a pain, or you take your medication or eat your food, thank God, our good father, in advance by personalizing the third clause of 1 Peter 2.24 and saying, Thank you, Father God. By the stripes on Jesus' back, I am healed. You may have to say it a thousand times, ten thousand times, or a hundred thousand times, but if you keep saying with your mouth and believing with your heart that you are healed because of what Jesus has already done for you before even your natural body can feel or see the manifestation, you will be healed. Now, remember, the more the word we continually read with our eyes, the more we audibly quote healing scriptures with our mouth so that we can hear them with our ears and meditate and think on these Bible promises in our heart and mind, the faster our healing will manifest. I invite you to increase the intensity of your training in God's word by daily reading our foundational channel scriptures. I recommend you read these scriptures in the New King James Version unless otherwise specified. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. Genesis chapter 9 verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 7. Psalm chapter 4 verse 4. Psalm chapter 103 verse 1 through 7. Psalm chapter 105, verse 37. Psalm chapter 107, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 27. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 through 5. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6 through 8. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 through 17. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through 21. Mark chapter 11, verse 20 through 26. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 14, verse 21 through 24. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 through 27. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. King James Version. Before we leave, let's confess our affirming declaration together. Repeat after me. Jesus Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace of mind was laid upon him. 
And by the stripes on Jesus' back, we were healed. We are healed. And we are convinced and fully persuaded we always will be healed. Both mentally and physically. We call upon the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and declare he is our personal Savior and personal healer and personal provider. We believe we receive prosperity, perpetual healing, protection, and peace of mind. In Jesus' name, amen. This information is provided for informational purposes. Always consult a doctor or healthcare professional before changing your diet or making any other changes. I am not a doctor or licensed healthcare professional. By accessing this information, you release me, How to Be Healed TV, all its agents, and everyone else from any liability, and you assume all risk. While we have helped countless hundreds in various areas of their life. Results may vary and health and financial results are not typical. I am not a licensed financial advisor. We at How To Be Healed TV can't control the events of your life or make guarantees or take responsibility for your life. We are simply providing you success stories and biblical analysis of what other people did to overcome the adversity of this life. We must come to the conclusion that God is smarter than we are. If something isn't working, ask God what the solution is. He knows. And now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.